let's let's be honest why do we carry out safe isolation it's so we don't die it's it's that straightforward <laughs> It's not approved device, so you can't use that. I actually call this the GIMP, don't ask why. Hello and welcome to my channel, Danzy Engineer. I'm Dan Jackson, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to carry out safe isolation so we can isolate the main so we can work on a fire alarm panel. Now this will also work on intruder panels, access control, it will even work for uh, boilers, anything that has a main supply and an isolator so you can carry out your work safely to turn off the mains. So this will be handy for obviously fire alarm engineers, alarm engineers, plumbers, air conditioning, you name it, the list goes on. I'm gonna be running through eight steps. So first of all, step one, select an approved voltage testing device and test it on a known supply or a proven unit. Step two, verify your circuit so use your tester on the circuit that you're testing or in this instance our fire alarm panel we're going to check that our voltage voltage testers are, are functioning on that panel and that it's live step three identify the means of isolation step four turn off and lock off the circuit using a lock off kit step five install a warning label to your isolation device Step six, recheck with your voltage testers on your panel or, or your circuit, whatever you've isolated, that it is dead. Step seven, retest your testers on a known supply or proven unit. And then step eight, carry out your work. Let's go through those in a little bit more detail, but first of all, I'm gonna show you the tools and equipment that I use to carry out this procedure. So I've got a, a lockout kit and it's got various different sort of padlocks and whatever. I'm actually just going to be using this one, uh, but you know, it's got a variety for different panels. Um, you need to make sure you've got the right sort of lock off uh, bit of kit for the type of isolator that you're using. Um, you need tools to carry a job. Obviously they may vary. You need your voltage testers. Now, very important. These need to meet um, the GS38 standards. Now GS38, we've got uh, this document here. You can download it on the HSC website. It's free to download. I'll put a link in the descriptions below where you can do that. Very important to read that because that sort of sets out what testers can be used and you know what's regarded as approved. In our lockout kit, we've also got labels. Um, this is the padlock that I'm gonna be using in this video. It's actually an MK padlock and what's good about it is the way that it's very long here and the bar is actually quite thin so th these are incredibly handy i use these for all sorts this is my proving unit this is a mpu 690 um very simple bit of kit very easy to use cost about 80 quid something like that and it's made by mega then this is the electrical safety first guidance note practice guide two on safe isolation now in this video we are mainly concentrating on bits of equipment that are connected to like fuse spurs or isolators but it's very important that you need to know how to carry out this procedure otherwise let's let's be honest why do we carry out safe isolation it's so we don't die it's, it's that straightforward so if you want to go home each evening to your families because you haven't died of electric shock you need to make sure you know, you, you're sticking to the standards and this is a good reference. Again, free to download. I'll put a link in the descriptions of how you can download that. So let's start our procedure in a little bit more detail. So step one, select an approved voltage testing device and test it on a known supply or proving unit. So you go through GS38, you know what devices are approved and not approved. Um, I'm using these voltage testers, very straightforward. And we just put them on the, um, the voltage testing, the voltage setting. What you can't use for checking voltage is something like one of these screwdrivers. Now, I have this simply because it fits fire alarm terminals perfectly, but it is no good. It's not approved to GS38 for, for voltage testing, even though if you put it on it and you, you press the end, it, it's not approved device. You can't use that. I actually call this the GIMP. Don't ask why. Very handy little screwdriver that I keep in my pocket, but I don't use it for testing mains at all. So I've got my device, 
Now I'm gonna test my tester on my proving unit. So you hold it down on that. And you can see the voltage is being tested on my tester. So that's absolutely fine. We're good to go. Now the reason I suggest you use a proving unit is because you have to check your testers before and after you've done your safe isolation. So I use a proving unit because I can do that. But if you're only able to test on the circuit that you're isolating, you can't retest your testers afterwards. So it's always worth getting a proving unit. Step two, verify and check the voltage on the circuit or the equipment that you are testing. So this is our fire alarm panel and I'm going to be checking the voltage on the incoming terminals just behind there. So I'm gonna quickly check that my testers are working on the known power supply here. So, there we go, we got 230 volts. Step three, locate the means of isolation. Now given that it's got a label on it and it's next to the panel, I can assume that this is the isolator, but I'd be silly just to make assumptions. So all I'm gonna do is turn it off and my panel has a power failure. So I've now identified that this is the isolator for the panel. So now I've identified the isolator that isolates my panel. I'm actually just gonna quickly turn it back on and I'm actually gonna pull the battery off. And then isolate it. What's really important is that when you're working on any bit of equipment, the isolator needs to be lockable. If it's not lockable, you can't carry out safe isolation on that bit of equipment you're working on unless you isolate the circuit. Now, in this video, I'm not telling you how to actually isolate an entire circuit. This is more at the spur, at the fuse connection unit. If I do a video at some point about safe isolation of circuits, um, I'll put a link above that you can check that out. However, in this instance, we're, we're just making sure that we can isolate our spur to turn off our panel without turning the whole circuit off. Now, if there isn't a lockable isolator, and you know, there's quite a lot of them out there. Um, in fact, it's quite common. Like you might just have an unswitched spur, you know, a cheap brand that you can't lock off at all. Now, we use, um, we use MK isolators, so this is the, uh, the K963KO ALM range. They're metal clad, they're double pole, they've got neon, so you can easily tell if it's on or off. And um, they come with a 13 amp fuse, so we just put a five amp or whatever you need in them, and then we stick a little label on them to say that they're fire alarm. So they don't come in red or anything, but it meets regulations, and they're great, and they're lockable, that's the important thing. So step four, we're gonna turn off and isolate the circuit using the lock-off kit. So first of all, I'm gonna turn it off. Then with this, you use a fish key to undo the spur. These are anti-tamper as well. So a little bit fiddly, but it's for a good reason. It's so, you know, the wrong people can't turn them off. So there we have our spur. I'm just going to take the fuse out and that's going to go in my pocket then I'm going to use our padlock now this is why I use the MK padlock because it's designed perfectly to go through this hole here like that so it just slots in nice and easy I'm just going to do it up there we go so now you can't put that back in at all. You can't get a fuse in it. You can't put it back in. That cannot become live. So I'm gonna take the key out and very importantly, that is going in my pocket as well. Very important. So no one else can get hold of it. Step five, we're gonna fit a warning label to our isolating device. So on here, it's quite clear that I'm carrying out work. It says, do not operate. Um, I would usually note on here saying fire alarm panel isolated the date and it's signed by me and there's no excusing to understand what is going on there. 
So there we go, that's our labeling done. Step six, recheck your circuit with your testers to see that it's dead. Now obviously we've got battery at the minute, so I'm just gonna um, pull battery lead off. Leave that to one side. And then I'm gonna use my testers to check these terminals again to make sure that it is dead. I don't know if you can see there, but there's no voltage on that, so that's dead. Step seven, I'm gonna retest my testers to make sure that they're still working. Yep, so we're all good. And we can carry on to step eight, which is carry out your work. So now that my isolator is safely isolated, nobody can tamper with it or anything like that because it's locked off and I've got the key. So I'm gonna carry out my work. I'm gonna change my fire alarm panel, nice and simple, and I'm gonna put it all back together again. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it has been very helpful. I'm gonna be doing some more videos on safe isolation and a few other procedures, but if you've got any recommendations and things you want me to you know, video and record, by all means let me know. You can get hold of me on LinkedIn, on my Facebook page, Danzy Engineer, um, on Twitter, or you can put comments below. Um, as always, always happy to have a discussion with anybody and help out where I can. Thanks for watching guys. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Goodbye.